Today, I am doing a butterbeer from Harry Potter. Yep, that's right, the very same one. The very same butterbeer from Harry Potter. You guys all know it. You guys have watched the movies. I can remember when it was one broomstick. <laughs> <laughs> it's a magical ride. I've read all the books. I've watched all the movies multiple times. HBO is going to stream it in January. I'm very excited for this. So it's kind of preparation for that. It's also something that Sarah and I like to watch for our like Christmas time. It's like like how Die Hard's a Christmas movie for a lot of people. Harry Potter's our Christmas movie. It counts. It really counts. There's definitely Christmas trees in that for sure. I made this beer about two years ago, and the beer that I was trying to make was to have a lot of diacetyl in it. I got an English yeast strain. I fermented it cold on purpose, lower than normally should be, like low 60s. Didn't raise up to a temperature, which would get rid of or clean up the diacetyl. Uh, after I had cold, kept it cold for about two weeks, I bottled it straight from there. And I want a butterscotch. I want a butter bomb in this. I want that. It's kind of therapeutic, actually, to really try and make off flavors. Like, it's so counterintuitive. It feels kind of good. The grain profile in this, I want to make it really cloudy. Flaked oats, a lot. I'm looking at like 16%. Wheat is about 25%. And then Maris Otter. I want a lot of head retention on this. Like, the cloudy, yellow, like, beautiful creaminess to it. Last time I made this, I think it was two years ago when I first tried to make this, and I added some rum and I added some uh, caramel extracts, and it just, it just, the caramel extract was way too much. It hurt my stomach. It wasn't good. So this year, butter, butternut, butterscotch schnapps. I think it'll be a cleaner butterscotch aroma and flavor. And the hops I'm going to do are galaxy. I want something a little fruity, and I'm putting it way late in the boil, like five minutes left in the boil. Only a thirty minute boil on this. And the IBUs fat are going to be about 15, 7. 7 IBUs I'm going for on this. So let's get this brew day started. Expecto Patronum. All right, I'm going to add about a gram of calcium chloride to this. And to boost the body and mouthfeel a little bit. Or without any chloride or calcium chloride addition, my chlorides would be like 50 or something or 60. So adding it's gonna be, gonna be, about, gonna be about to 100. And uh, yeah, I might go a little more even, we'll see. I might wing it, we'll find out. All right, I did not put any uh, acid mold into my mash, in my grist I should say. So I'm gonna have to add some lactic acid into this. I'll probably throw like, maybe like 0.2 milliliters. Uh, Cause I know it's gonna probably be a little high. And that should give me to be close enough, I think. All right, that right there is 0.2. Let's take a temp reading here. Man, I'm a little low. That's unfortunate. Yeah, I haven't missed my temp target in a while. Uh, 152 degrees Fahrenheit. I might throw a little bit of boiling water into this. You bring it up a little bit, but it's winging it right now. So I'm dealing with this much like proteins and beta-glucans, um, beta-glucans from the flake stuff and uh, you know high protein for the wheat. Uh, it's a good idea to add some rice hulls to this. It helps prevent a stuck mash. All right, it's been about 20 minutes. I uh, you know got my pH to the right levels, added some rice hulls. I want to heat this up a little bit. I think I might just do like sort of like um, alpha amylase rest here and get it close to like 155, 160, somewhere in that range. And I'll probably just cut my sparge down in half, which was half a gallon. All right, this got me to 154. So that's fine. Boosted up a little bit. I did want some of those longer dextrins, some of the alpha families to do their work. So yeah, let's go for another half an hour and uh, start the runoff. Experiomus. I'm doing an iodine test. It's been a very long time. Five months? Four months? What I like to do is throw some paper towels into a bowl, a white bowl. And then what I do is I run some more over the top of it to filter it out to get rid of the particulates. Throw some iodine in there. My iodine I use is... Hold on. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Iota 4. And uh, throw a couple drops in there. 
If it turns blue, there's more starches left to convert. If it doesn't turn blue and stays brown, it's good to go. Mm, I'm at 1.9 gallons. So close. I might not need to do a sparge. What I'm going to do is wait for this to run up fully, take a gravity reading, and if I need to, I'll just top off with some distilled water. Going for 1040 pre boil, 1050 post boil, 1037. I'm okay with that. On days like this, when you're just having fun, you just go for it. There's no consequences, really. That never really is, though. Unless you're not a commercial brewery, then, of course. <music> Looks like I'm at 77 degrees Fahrenheit, somewhere around there. Close enough. I'm calling it. Uh, my pitching temps right now, I don't really care about because my butter beer can be really anything. Like I said, I'm fermenting it at 62 degrees Fahrenheit or low 60s and I'm keeping it there. So I start at like 70, it's fine. There are other strains like I think of Bruce Moore Acetal than this one. And I almost bought one, I think in 1968 by Y Yeast produces a little more. Uh, but upon research, I did find that this also could do it. So I just got to make sure for a minute cold, as I said, keep it around 62, 61, won't raise it up. I'm probably going to over pitch a little bit too. I think I might pitch the rest of this packet, which is about three quarters of a packet. So we'll see. But either way, the butterscotch is going to take care of any sort of potential lack thereof of the butterscotch flavor or the butterscotch schnapps, I should say. Thanks for watching. I'm very happy about this butter beer that I'm creating. I have high hopes this year. I really do. I think it's going to be delicious. And watch the crap at Harry Potter drinking it and uh, get out there and brew a style that's not even a style.